Sagittarius, hello there, my beautiful friends. We're going to do your general tarot reading for mid-January 2024. Thank you so much for joining me today. You know I appreciate each and every single one of you. So let's get right down to business, as always, and start you off with an oracle card here, just so we could dip our toes into energy and see what's happening for the lovely Saggies out there. Hope you're all doing fantastic, my friends. Let's get it going, my guides. Talk to me. What do we have for Sagittarius here in mid-January 2024? Okay, yeah, the cards are wanting to talk already, my friends. I'm trying to jump out of my hands. But yeah, we're just going to take a real quick look at this first card, and we'll get into the full reading itself. And at the very end, I'll pull you a bonus card from the Shadowland Tarot, just to see what might be in the shadows or what shadow work you clean in on, which is always interesting. But let's get it going here. Let's rock and see what we got for my Saggies, please. My guides, talk to me. Let's get you one real quick. There it is. Thank you. All right. So I'll, I'll take it. This is a lot of people here. A lot of people. And this card is a rare one. It doesn't always come out for a lot of people. Like it's rare that I see this one. Now, there's this man, this woman, these different pictures. There's links to social media here and groups of people or just a lot of energies that could be affecting you or a lot of things on your mind. So there's a lot of things to talk about here. Before we fully break that down, though, if you're new here, I'll be speaking about the January subscriber surprise towards the end. So you might want to check that out also if you could kindly illuminate that like button by tapping it right on its third eye you know i'd greatly appreciate it but enough of the promo into the reading let's talk about this card so yeah like i mentioned you see that bald-headed dude you see the woman all the d various different pictures people in the background so there are a lot of energies at play here for some of you maybe this is just a lot of people around you right this could be a lot of people you're dealing with a lot of people in your energy this is also a card i see when there's a lot of things either affecting you or on your mind so for some sages in this time maybe you just got a lot going on right this is a very busy busy bee type of energy for a small portion of you yeah there is this connection here with social media in one way or another so maybe some of you are trying to lay off social media maybe some some of you are trying to utilize it for business or what have you. This is a big card for that. But when I see a lot of people in the energy, I wouldn't be surprised if we we're going to start picking up court cards within the reading itself, that your empathy could be heightened and the energy of other people could be affecting you. Okay. Unless this is just multiple people and this reading is going to be about them. That's yet to be seen, but we're just going to put them down right there. Let's get into tarot now and I always say that first card it doesn't make or break the reading it's just a little footnote let's get you three cards in the upright then we'll get into that intuitive juiciness let's shuffle it up here one time for the lovely saggies and while we get this deck ready let's talk about last week's reading it was titled a shocking victory so for a lot of you I just want to want you to know there was this tower energy in your reading last week but it felt like a good one so I wouldn't be surprised for a lot of you whether you and I always say wins and victories come in all different shapes and sizes, that there were things popping up out of nowhere where it's like, all right, well, that was good. That was nice. And that energy could still bleed over into the coming days and weeks. So keep that in mind. But let's see what we have for you this week. As you know, energy is very fluid, never set in stone. So only take this how it hits for you because we could be seeing your vibe or someone that you're linked to. So let's get it going here. Let's see what we got for Saggy, please. Mid-January, my gods. All right, that card didn't want to come out. Okay, yeah. All right, so we have a very stern type of energy starting us off here, my friends. King of Swords, so like I said, the energy of other people could be affecting you. Like your empathy could be very much heightened here. Let's get a couple more and really start to break this down. A couple more for Saggy, please. Interesting stuff. Okay, so we do have the devil here in the center. That is something we are really going to want to watch out for as we progress through. Let's get you one more. I'll really start to break it down. Okay, you're going to have a bonus here. So on the back end, we have the Six of Pentacles. And I'm already seeing a theme that I've been seeing for a lot of the fire signs this week. And it seems like the Saggy placements are getting it as well. We also have the Nine of Cups right here on the back end. So we have a little bit of a mixed bag here, Saggy. We're going to go through. I'll give you some of the classical meanings and archetypes. And we'll get into that juicy, intuitive stuff. So at first look, first glance. Once again, in the main part of the spread, we have air, then we have earth, and we have earth. When we have a lot of earth energy showing up, that is a big focus on the material world, what we do for work, home situations, family. We're thinking material when we have so much earth. And as a fire sign myself, I know earth energy could sometimes frustrate us because when we want to do something, we want to do it now. 
Earth energy is not the best when it comes to restriction, but we have very positive cards here on the back end, very stern cards on the front. So it's like we have this yin yang of energy starting us off. Let's go through one by one and really start to build this whole thing out. So position number one, we have the King of Swords, air sign energy. So Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, possibly. This could represent older male figures, but remember, it's not always gender specific. This could even be an energy that you're encapsulating or you're stepping into. When I see the King of Swords, it is very strategic. It is extremely plan-based. Okay, so it could be somebody planning something or making plans or strategizing, absolutely. It is extremely intelligent. No BS with this card. So yeah, if it isn't the planning and strategizing, it's somebody analyzing. This is a very stern, serious card as well. So whenever I see the King of Swords, if it's not representing a person, this could be someone who's like, no, I'm using my brain, I'm using logic, I'm not using my feelings. So this could be someone that is fully in their head space when this card is here. It's also, remember, kings are the controllers of their respective suit. The sword suit is all about the mind and communication. So maybe we will have some kind of talk or communication possibly. We'll see when it plays out. Usually this king really controls a narrative whenever we see it. I'll just put it like that. Another thing with this king of swords, though, once again, very stern, very serious. So it could speak of situations that someone is taking serious or might need to. Move into the center. We have the devil card, okay? I wouldn't get super nervous. I mean, I never get nervous about any damn card, but when the devil is here, the imagery can be a little bit concerning. So this card could mean a whole host of different things. This is one of the more complex cards in the whole entire deck. The devil could just represent a Capricorn in your life. So if someone, I mean, we are currently at the time of this filming in Capricorn season, so maybe it's something coming down the pipeline. For a portion of you, if it's not a Capricorn due to the goat symbolism, that's the only reason I get this card. The devil could represent things that have been sticking with you for a very long time. This could represent a lot of things. It could represent uh, an addiction of some sort, whether you're addicted to a person, whether you're addicted to a behavior, even a thought process. The devil is generally something that we know it's not the best for us, but it's hard to resolve this energy. It could be anything from jealousy to toxicity to obsession. It could be so many different things when this card is here. It doesn't always have to be worst case scenario, though, but it is locked in. Okay, it's an energy that's really difficult to resolve. So we're going to want to check that out to see if it's a warning. Okay, for sure. Now, moving... <clears throat> To the back end, and I'll say this before we get to the Six of Pentacles, watch out for issues with authority figures in this time. So parental figures, we're talking uh, bosses and CEOs and politicians, stuff like that. Let's not even go down that road. We have the Six of Pentacles on the back end. This is where the energy really does start to soften up. Now, I will say it does have the scales in it. So I say, yeah, sometimes it could sh foreshadow a Libra. It could also represent karmic situations as well. But generally, when we see this card, we think of, of balance. We think of equality. This is a very giving, loving type of card. It's a charitable energy where you want to give of yourself. Put your energy into something or someone wants to give to you when this card is here. This is one of my biggest cards of gift giving. So you might be planning on gifting somebody. Maybe someone's gifting you. It could be all those things. Sometimes it could be a nice surprise. So it all really depends a challenge with the Six of Pentacles is not letting people take advantage of your kindness. That's one thing I will say. Now, moving to your bonus card, which is another little footnote. We have the Nine of Cups. Beautiful, loving, content type of energy. It's super welcoming and does speak of wish fulfillment, so things going good. So there could be something that, yeah, needs to be resolved, but the energy gets better towards the back end for sure. One thing I will say about the Nine of Cups is a challenge with it is one, not letting people take advantage of your kindness, but at the same time, not to overindulge. So you see this Nine of Cups connects with both of these cards. So things to watch out for in the coming days and weeks. But I want to dive deeper on all of it, Saggy. Let's jump in and clarify. Yeah, there could be some warnings here. We'll see. Doesn't have to be. So what do we got for Saggy, please? And yes, this is where I go intuitive with the message, which means I just tell you how it feels to me. So feel free to do further research or rely on your base knowledge of tarot because, as you know, every single reading is about the reader's interpretation, and I'm just giving you mine. Let's go in on that King of Swords. And yes, if you're a reader yourself, please feel free to play along. That's why the box is here. If you're feeling any messages you want to give to Saggy, you can drop it in the comments. I don't mind at all. All right, King of Swords time. What's happening? Why is this King of Swords here? Thank you. 
Oh, yeah, this is someone who refuses to lose. Okay, very similar to the energy we saw last week. We have this Six of Wands, fire-air combination, very explosive. Something starting with a bang, that could absolutely be it when we have this energy right here in the front end. The Six of Wands, to me, is a card of total victory. So when I see it, I think of someone who's like, all right, I will win. I will come out on top. There's no way that this is going to go wrong for me. So for a portion of you, maybe it is someone who's like, I will make sure that I win. It's like I'm taking this very seriously and there's no way that I will come out uh, anything less than first. So there might be a person around you that is very much in that sense. Like if you're not first, you're last. It's giving me that type of energy. Watch out for egomaniacs in this time. I know this isn't a bad card, but I just have to tell a lot of you, watch out for people like that. Or if you're not first, you're last and just very ego driven. But the Six of Wands is generally very good. So Spirit could be saying like, hey, if you... If you have a strong mind about you, if you enter into something and you have a plan of action, there could be a serious win on your hands as well. So once again, taking something seriously leads to really good positive results like victories and wins. Okay, just watch out for the ego people. That's one thing I will say, you know, certain individuals, because we'll see how it plays throughout the rest. I don't want to go there just yet. I feel like this one, yeah, the yin-yang of energy, where it could be either really, really good, where the results are nice, but at the same time, there's a little bit of a warning as well. Let's keep moving. I don't want to get too complicated here. It is what it is. So let's see why the devil is in our lives here. What's going on with this devil? Thank you. Okay. Yeah, so just when something was going good... Here comes this unexpected problem or this unexpected situation or this speed bump, okay? All right, now it's starting to make more sense here. So for a lot of you, if this isn't how you're feeling or something that's going on with you, it could be somebody else as well. But the two of wands, similarities to this king of swords, more fire. Generally to me, as with all twos, it could represent decisions, choices, being at a crossroads, but it is a big part of strategy and planning. So whenever I see this two of wands show up in reverse, it's unexpected. It's unplanned. And when I see the devil here as well, remember I did say it could be a warning. Although we have this drive to win or this person is like, yeah, if you're not first, you're last. I'm seeing unexpected or unforeseen problems, right? Or situations or problems that are popping up out of nowhere. It's like, okay, well, let's, let's just see how strong you are. So for a portion of you, maybe there was something you were dealing with. Maybe it's a work thing, a relationship thing, a money thing where it's like, yeah, everything's going good. Let's kick it into um auto drive right let's just kick it and let things coast it's like no -uh, not so fast how do you like this so just i would say watch out in this time if things are feeling good just be alert right just know that things can and do happen and they will happen you know how life is right life could always throw you curveballs problems and situations and i'm seeing it here in the center um don't rest on your laurels that's another thing i'm picking up here like yes it's good accomplishing things it's good winning things but don't rest on that like you gotta don't get caught slipping <laughs> it's the best thing i could say that's what's showing up in my head let's keep moving to the six of pentacles as i already said this could just be somebody that's you know the unexpected problem or situation popping up it's like yeah just when things were going good boom here here you go deal with this it's like one of those things so let's go in on that six then we'll do a quick little recap before we get into the shadow card. I mean, life has a funny way of doing that sometimes, though, right? Okay, Nine of Pentacles. Yeah, things will stabilize. Uh, things will get better. The Nine of Pentacles is a beautiful energy to me. It's an abundant type of energy. It is a little independent as well. So I feel for some of you, you might be just very happy with your independence in one form or another. Take that if it hits. But for another portion of when I see this Nine of Pentacles underneath the Six of Pentacles... Um, it could be spirit asking you to let others in as well. So only take that if it hits. In regards to these issues and problems, things will settle. Um, things will get better. Things will calm down. That's one thing I'm seeing right here in the back end. It's like, all right, yeah, whatever's happening here in the middle, it's not an, a forever type of thing. Things will get better and things will improve. If you need some assistance, get some assistance, right? Because this is a card of charity and help. Okay, I'm not saying you need charity, but I think you pick, you're picking up what I'm putting down. Um, also, repeating nines are starting to show up. we got the repeating numbers in our lives. And I love this card because it's very materially well off. It's extremely sturdy. But it could be someone that is just super, super independent. 
Okay, so if you're not just happy and concerned, it's like, yeah, no, yeah, I'm good. I'm fine. I'm cool doing this solo. Um, for a portion of you, though, it, it might be beneficial or more beneficial for you to let others in, right? It might be easier said than done, depending on what this is or what you've been going through. So let's go through and do a quick little recap here, Saji. Then we'll get into the shadow card. Once again, a yin-yang, a mixed bag of energy we have going on here. If you kindly look in the box, position number one, we do have the King of Swords with the Six of Wands in the upright. Beautiful energy initially. I did say for a lot of you, if there's something you take seriously and you plan for it, there could be a serious win of some kind coming in for you. But I did also say watch out for ego, like ego maniacal type of individuals where it's like, yeah, look what I've done. If you're not in first place or last place, those type of people... Uh, another thing, don't rest on your laurels. Just because you've had a couple of wins or victories doesn't mean it's always going to be that way. And moving to the center, we do have the devil with the two of wands in reverse, something popping up. So just when things are going good, just when things are going smooth, things are on track, this devil pops up. Watch out for unexpected problems and situations here. Moving to the back end, we have the six of pentacles and the nine of pentacles in the upright. Things stabilizing. So whatever does pop up, it's not going to fully derail but some of you might just be happy in solitude for a portion of you. Another portion of you, spirit could be saying like, hey, all right, you might be good. Maybe let some others in. That could make things much easier. Okay, but I do still see some good possibilities, right? It's like a sandwich of energy we have going on here. Yeah, please take a screenshot and look into that further, Saggy. Let's get you a shadow card. Let's see what's in the shadows for Sagittarius. Yeah, that was a lot happening in your reading this week. It's all good, though. What's up? And yes, I always like to pull one shadow card at the very end just to see whether it's something within you or something you don't quite see just yet. A shadow card doesn't always have to be a challenge. It could be a good thing. So let's get you one shadow card. Oh, and yes, if you've made it to this point in the reading, please feel free to check out channel memberships. I'll put a link for it down in the comments below. It is a beautiful way to support the channel. Obviously, no pressure at all. I just wanted to mention it. So let's get it going. What do we have for Saggy in the shadows? Thank you. Okay, more pentacles. Eight of pentacles. Very hardworking, diligent type of energy. For a portion of you, this could be a big focus on work. That it, Spirit's telling you, like, hey, there's something around work, ethic, and effort that could be showing up here in the shadows. For a portion of you, the fact that this is a shadow card, your work situation, what you do for a living, could be affecting you in more ways than you realize. Okay, so just take that for whatever it's worth. Some of you might just be having issues with work and money. That's a possibility whenever the Eight of Pentacles shows up in the shadows. But remember, this is a card of effort. This is a card of diligence, putting energy towards something. So I don't always feel like this is bad. For a portion of you, there could be something good coming around in regards to work as well. That could be something that's very claimable. But just know whatever you're putting your energy into, and we saw it within the reading itself, that is what will yield fruits. Okay, so whatever you throw your energy into in a very vigorous type of way, that's what's going to yield you results. For another portion of you, don't don't be a workaholic either. It's all about work-life balance. If you're always working like seven days a week, um, all the time, spirit could be asking you, like, listen, maybe take a break. Okay, it's okay to take a break, take a vacation. I know Saggies love to travel. So we're just going to put that Eight of Pentacles right there. That's what I have for you this week, my friends. Don't click away just yet, though. I'm going to give you the details. The January subscriber surprise. For the January subscriber surprise, I'm giving away two copies of the beautiful Tarot of the Owls Tarot deck. It's one of my favorite new decks out there. So if you'd like to get your name in for that, it's two simple things, as always, my friends. First, you must be subscribed. And second, let me know down in the comments what are one of your biggest goals for this year that we just entered into? You'll be entered to win, and at the end of the month, I'll announce the winners in my community tab at random. As always, my friends, much love, and I'll see you again soon.